Science have recently managed to find a way to get a picture of a black hole. You know, I was always fascinated by black holes when I was a kid. Wrote a book report about them back in grade 9. But there was always a mystery about them, wasn't there? What exactly is a black hole and why are they so significant? To talk about this and other subjects is today's guest, Dr. Hugh Ross, an astronomer and founder of Reasons to Believe, and he joins us now via Skype from Los Angeles. Dr. Ross, welcome back to Bridge City News. Oh, my, well, my pleasure. Thank you. Now, first of all, Doctor, can you really share with our viewers what exactly a black hole is? Well, a black hole is a massive body that's collapsing under its own gravity, and it's so dense that, that it just continues collapsing. In fact, the gravity is so strong that anything that gets close enough to it gets sucked into it, even light itself, hence black. So is it true that if you're able to live inside of a black hole and you shine a flashlight outside, that the light will not escape, nor will the sound escape if you, if you yelled? That's right. Although there is one idea of a black hole shrinks to a small enough size where it shrinks down to the size of atomic nucleus, uh, the stuff that's trapped inside could quantum tunnel out, but it takes 10 to the 66 years minimum. So we've not seen anything like that happen in the universe. The universe is way too young for that phenomenon to have occurred. Now let's talk a bit about your organization, Reasons to Believe. What is it all about? Well, Reasons to Believe, we're a group of research scientists, and we pull scientific discoveries from God's book of nature to make a link to the book of scripture. You know, God gave us two books, and so we use these latest scientific discoveries uh, to bring people to the book of scripture, uh, bring them to the Christian faith, and ultimately bring them to faith in Jesus Christ. Now, some people say you really can't mix science with faith. How do you harmonize the two? Let me ask you well, that. Well, science have brought me to faith. I mean, I was raised in British Columbia. I uh, didn't have Christian parents or Christian friends, but it was through my studies in astronomy, I became persuaded that there had to be a beginning to the universe. And so I began to search for that beginner and found of all the world's holy books, only the Bible got all the cosmology correct. In fact, it predicted future uh, astronomical discoveries thousands of years ahead of its time. And that's what motivated me to sign my name in the back of a Gideon Bible, giving my life to Jesus Christ. And again, it's two books. God's responsible for the book of nature. He's responsible for the book of scripture. They're both communicating the same message. Now let's get back to black holes for just a moment here. Should we be concerned about black holes? Do they pose any threats to Earth? They would pose a threat if they were close. And this image that just got uh, processed by the Event Horizon uh, uh, team, they were imaging a black hole that's 50 million light years away. And even though it's pouring a very deadly radiation, we're far enough away that it doesn't pose a risk to us. But it's one of the fine-tuning arguments. We happen to be in a galaxy that's nowhere near to any other galaxy that's got a supergiant black hole that could pose a risk for us. Uh, you know, the Andromeda galaxy has a supermassive black hole uh, that's 25 to 100 times bigger than our black hole. Uh, but we're far enough away, two and a half million light years, that it doesn't pose a risk. And so, yes, black holes are a danger. In fact, black holes explain why for most of the universe, life is simply not possible. But we happen to be living in that just right galaxy. Any potential of a sun maybe imploding, maybe not our sun, but maybe another star imploding and then within our own solar system and our galaxy, potentially becoming a black hole down the road? Our galaxy has got uh, several uh, stellar mass type black holes. And what I mean is a black hole is coming in at say five, uh, to 10 times the mass of our star, the sun. So we have quite a few of those in our uh, Milky Way galaxy. What we see the Event Horizon team focusing on are what are called supermassive black holes. Black holes that weigh millions to billions of times the mass of our star, the sun. And these exist at the center of galaxies. Our own Milky Way galaxy is a supermassive black hole. Matter of fact, the team, that will probably be the next image they release will be of the black hole at the center of our galaxy. Now, what's fortunate for the two of us is that the black hole at the center of our Milky Way galaxy only weighs four million times the mass of our star, the sun. And uh, we happen to be 
26,000 light years away. And so it, because it's a small supermassive black hole and because we're that far away, it poses no risk to life here on planet Earth. But yeah, if we were orbiting any closer to the center of our galaxy, we'd be in big trouble. So how were scientists able to actually capture a picture of that black hole 50 million light years away? How was that done? Well, the event horizon is really tiny. Uh, we're talking something that's uh, a few times the size of our solar system, 50 million light years away. So the only way you can image uh, these black holes is with extremely high resolution telescopes. And what astronomers have done is they've linked together radio telescopes all across the planet and basically have simulated the resolution power of a telescope that's five to 6,000 miles across. And that's the only instrument we have today that's got the resolving power to actually see that really tiny dark spot in the midst of that bright sphere, you see, because outside the event horizon, you've got matter being converted into energy with about 10% efficiency. That explains why it's so incredibly bright outside the event horizon. And we've seen that bright stuff before, but we've not been able to see that little black spot defined by the event horizon. But now we got the telescope power to pull it off. And I can tell you another little tidbit, the very first experiment linking together radio telescopes thousands of miles apart from one another was done in Canada in the 1960s. So the technique actually originated with a radio telescope in Penticton, British Columbia, and one in Algonquin Park, Ontario. But now that's been exploited to involve radio telescopes all over the world. Back in the 1960s, that's pretty impressive. You know, the picture, I mean, we had it on Bridge City News as well, did not actually seem that impressive though of that black hole. So why all of the excitement? Because it's the first time we actually captured a picture of one? It's the first time we've actually seen that little central black spot that's defined by the event horizon. And yeah, they the team has released the first image they've been able to pull off as a remarkable success. But their goal is to come up with much higher resolution images of these supermassive black holes, not only in that M87 galaxy 50 million light years away, they're especially interested in getting an image of the supermassive black hole in our Milky Way galaxy. And uh, where we get the payoff, if we can get high resolution images, we'll be able to tell something about the integration of quantum mechanics and gravity, what's referred to in astrophysics as quantum gravity physics. And this is one tool to be able to penetrate and see what's going on in the quantum gravity era of the history of the universe is looking, getting really high precision images. And that will tell us whether or not the space-time theorems hold all the way back to the very beginning of the universe. And as a Christian, I'm excited about this because that would give us definitive proof that a God beyond space and time created the entire universe. So yeah, I'm really excited about what's gonna be coming out uh, from future images. You know, for just a moment there, I felt like I was in an episode of The Big Bang Theory and I was one of the characters, Kuthra Pali and maybe Dr. Sheldon Cooper. I understand that Einstein's theory of relativity predicted black holes like this. Tell me more about that. Uh, well, it wasn't Einstein himself, but people who took his theory of general relativity and uh, basically determined that uh, it leads to the conclusion that you're gonna get bodies massive enough that they're gonna be able to collapse under their own gravity where radiation is not gonna be able to stop the collapse. And so that was discovered back in uh, 1939. And uh, actually a Canadian physicist was involved with uh, Oppenheimer in publishing the first paper that predicted there would be neutron stars and uh, black holes. And uh, so it, we, we've known about these for a long time, but now we're actually seeing these black holes. And that's what's so exciting to the astrophysical community. So Dr. Ross, the mass of the black hole, six and a half billion times as much as the sun. I mean, that's pretty big. How are they able to actually measure the mass of something that far away? Well, they do it using Newtonian mechanics. It was Isaac Newton who kind of laid out the idea that if you can measure the orbit of a body going about a really massive body, uh, knowing the distance between the body, uh, the orbiting body and the mass of body and the speed with which it goes, you get the mass of the body. So it's just straight Newtonian physics. 
providing you've got measurements of stars orbiting that supermassive black, black hole or the gas that's orbiting about it, that will give you uh, the mass. And actually this image gave us an independent measurement of the mass of that black hole, but it was consistent with the measurements we already had. So yeah, it is really six and a half billion times uh, the mass of our star, the sun. And by the same token, we know that the mass of the one in our Milky Way galaxy is 4.02 million times the mass of our star, the sun. Because we can measure the orbits with much higher precision in our galaxy, we get a more accurate measurement of that mass. And you know, I've actually written about this in my book, The Creator in the Cosmos, the fourth edition. It came out a few months ago. And we predicted that these discoveries would be made and it's actually gonna to lead to more secure evidence from a Christian perspective that the God of the Bible created everything. And we're giving that chapter away for free, reasons.org slash Ross. So if anybody wants to go into the details and to see the papers, reasons.org slash Ross. Intelligent design. Dr. Ross, now that they've captured the first ever photo of the black hole, what is the next big step for astronomers? The next big step is to get many more images, not just of this black hole, but of other black holes in the centers of galaxies. And the real goal is to be able to penetrate what's called the quantum gravity era. That's the physics of the universe when the universe was only one ten millionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second old. It's only that extremely early split second of the universe where we still don't have a complete understanding of the physics of the universe, these supermassive black holes have the potential, along with other, a couple of other observational techniques, to actually penetrate that era. That's what's driving all the excitement. We can actually understand the entire history of the universe from its very creation event uh, to the present. And I think that's going to provide us with even more compelling evidences in astrophysics that a god beyond space and time not only created it, but designed it. And one other thing we're gonna find out is that actually the number and the masses of black holes, both the supermassive ones and the ordinary ones, we're gonna discover that they're fine tuned to make possible advanced life within our Milky Way galaxy. So it's actually gonna help us discern some of the personal attributes of the one that created space and time. As the technology evolves with these incredible telescopes, do you think we'll ever see potentially life on other planets or maybe UFOs that are out there in other galaxies? Well, um, we've now found almost 4,000 planets outside of our uh, solar system. And uh, when they were first discovering these in the 1990s, astronomers were predicting these planets would be just like the planets in our solar system. What they found is none of them or like any of the planets in our solar system. And this led to the discovery that every planet in our solar system is especially fine-tuned design to make possible advanced life here on planet Earth. So when our family celebrates Thanksgiving, we thank God not only for our planet Earth, we thank God for Mercury, Venus, Neptune, Uranus. We celebrate all of them because we realize if they weren't exactly the way they were, there'd be no Thanksgiving dinner on the table. And so it's actually revealed just how marvelously and uniquely designed. I can tell you this, everywhere we astronomers look outside of our solar system, we see conditions that are extremely hostile to the possibility of advanced life, which means we better take care of our planet Earth. There's nowhere else to go. You know, sometimes that blows my mind as well when reading God's Word. And I mean, we have billions upon billions of planets out there, but only one, as far as we know, has life. And God made that right here on Earth. So in the end, how does this continue to remind us that the heavens declare the glory of God? Well, you made that comment about the billions. There's actually 50 billion trillion stars and about that many planets as well in the universe. What we now know make the universe slightly bigger than what we see no possibility for life. Make it slightly smaller, no possibility for life. The universe has to be exactly the size and mass and the age that it is in order for us to be having this conversation today. The entire heavens declare the glory of God. As it says in Psalm 96, it also declares his righteousness. As we look out into the universe, we see there's not only a God that created it all, it's a God that's got 
a plan for us human beings that's going to live beyond the existence of the universe itself. Amen. He's got our backs as well. Dr. Hugh Ross, an astronomer and founder of Reasons to Believe, thanks so much for joining me today from Los Angeles. You're very welcome. On behalf of all of us here at BCN, I'm Hal Roberts. God bless and have a great night.